Good morning and thank you for joining us for another episode of Off the Press, a program where we take a look at the headlines on the newspapers and with the help of our guest, who today is uh, communication expert, Shaibu Usaini, um, who will help us uh, make sense of it. Thank you very much for joining us, Mr. Usaini. The pleasure is mine. All right, we will start things off with the Punch newspaper. The big one is 50% pregnant women, nursing mothers, others days at hospital. Uh, that's a nationwide lockdown. And uh, we also have uh, pain lecturers without biometrics, fraudulent, says Asu. Borrowers grown as MFB's demand loan repayment. Oil records a second monthly drop on sold cargoes increase. Those are some of the headlines on the front page of the Punch newspaper. Um, what you're seeing under the big one is outpatient visits drop from 4 to 2 million. Lagos discharges 541. Pandemic kills over 85,000 people in the U.S. And then there's a picture of, um, is it? Underneath the picture, you're looking at home feeding for school children begins. Parents collect pupils' ration, as you can see on the screen, uh, social distancing and face mask in Clairview. Underneath that, you find details of that story, though, on page 10 of the paper. Six drowned in Cross River while returning from funeral. Budget, federal government meets National Assembly, raises debt services by 225 billion naira. Ashumanak, two others arraigned for the filing minor. And then we have Buhari daughter's scene. DSS ordered to pay trader 10 million naira. Uh, that story was a big deal a while back. Uh, we seem to have a resolution on the matter. We'll get our guests to share his thoughts on it. Um, to other headlines, we have uh, 24 Kokwaibom girls rescued from Lagos traffickers' den and oil commissioner dies, Mike Kainde Algon, of this morn. All right, uh, Mr. Shaibu. Yeah. Uh, which of these headlines would you want to pick up quickly? Well, I want to quickly look at the issue of the MFMB demanding loan repayment from the, uh, those who are owing them. Uh, I, I don't know whether they are covered under the presidential directive that they should be given some uh, moratorium because of the um, pandemic. Um, I think we, we, uh, the CBN needs to look into that because I, I recall that when the president addressed the nation, he had said that those who have been given certain loans by government banks, by uh, uh, government institutions, or uh, he mentioned some of the. He didn't mention specifically the banks, but I, I think that um, there's a need for these banks to also, you know, uh, consider those who took these loans because the pandemic really caused a lot of um, disruption. You know, especially in repayment of the loan and especially in doing things that will actually get them some funds to do that. Then um, also in the news, they talked more. Uh, I mean, we heard about the rising cases of uh, patients who are dying of the pandemic. Uh, that is expected, especially that back here in the country, especially with the easing of the lockdown. Um, but we are also uh, happy that um, there are some recoveries, and some of these uh, some of these people that have recovered have come up to to comment the process and also to say how this process can be improved upon. And one of the things I got, especially from a media mogul who um, recovered, um, I don't know whether to mention his name now, but Chief Lopez was in the news, uh, was that we need to enhance our testing capacity. Uh, the, the guys at the testing centers are overwhelmed and we need to do more, you know, in terms of to enhance our testing capacity because right. presently we are not testing enough and that's why and, and that's why the figures are coming in trickles by the day. Uh, if, if we do enough testing, I'm very sure that um, we have so many people at the isolation center and that is why I think also 
that the NCC is a bit, you know, hesitant of carrying out the kind of um, testing that they want to do because uh, we don't have isolation center. You saw that recently they were asking people to donate hotels and um, personal apartments for uh, isolation. And then the issue of the pregnant women. I mean, you know that definitely there's going to be a breakdown of health uh, services because attention is paid to um, treatment of um, uh, the COVID-19, uh, the coronavirus. Um, there are so many people who are giving birth at home because of the fear that they may not get the kind of attention that they require at the, at, at the medical centers. And this is not correct, really. We, 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 don't need, we, we don't need to close our medical facilities because we are handling corona. I mean, I was asking the other day, are we saying that there are no other um, um, infections? I mean, there are no other diseases that people are infected with beyond coronavirus. There's still uh, Lassa fever, there's still meningitis, there's still malaria all, all over the place. We should not just close up our shops. I, I was at the medical facility not too long ago. And they just brought someone, and, they, and the guys at the gates just concluded that this guy came with COVID. And I asked, how do you know that the guy came with COVID? He said, they can see from the way, I mean, you cannot determine that. So we need to open up facilities. We need to have designated facilities. I mean, in Lagos, for instance, we have the mother and, and child facility. I don't think we have this kind of facilities across the country. So All we right. need to let, open let, up let, more facilities let, so that... Um, we don't endanger, you know, lives while we're trying to protect, uh, while we're trying to protect other lives. Okay, uh, we, we need to squeeze in as much papers as we can. Let's uh, take the Nation newspaper now. Um, the yeah. big one on the front page is Frederick government frowns as state reopens mosque churches. Task force to engage governors after Bonu Gombe Zamfara, Damawa East lockdown. More Lagosians favor return of lockdown. That's uh, from the poll that was conducted on uh, social media by the state government. At the top of the paper, uh, we have the Baba Afe Babalola folds government's homegrown feeding. Kidnappers abandon army captain. Uh, we just saw in the previous paper a picture of those palliatives uh, being uh, given for the homegrown feeding, continuing uh, in spite of all the controversies around it. Uh, we'll get a uh, guest to talk about that in a bit. Uh, governors kick against infectious disease bill. That's another trending conversation. Uh, NGF 6 stay of action. Details on page 8 of the paper. Ondo uncovers 4.3 billion naira in secret account opened by a Gagu government. Oya Commissioner dies of heart attack. Fashoro tea, an epitome of consistency, says uh, Tinubu. Those are some of the um, headlines uh, in the papers on your front page, the nation. Uh, returning Nigerians to pay for quarantine. That's a uh, total cost of 843,200 naira. Uh, that those from Thailand, Turkey, and Kuwait. And then there are some riders to the um, figures being captured there. We've had about 1.6 million people recover from the virus uh, globally. So that's some um, uh, cherry news, of far higher than the debts that we've recorded. No debt is uh, not important, but at least there's been some recoveries. All right, Mr. Hosseini, uh, back to you now. Um, the, the home feeding program, uh, there's been a lot of controversy around it. And that picture shows us that government is plowing on with this plan to feed children even while they are at home. Uh, and a renowned um, educator there is saying that there is something not quite right with the home feeding program. What's your take on it? I, I, I agree with him. I agree with him. I mean, if we couldn't get to uh, people in their various homes, I mean, during the proper lockdown, how is it possible for us to get to children, you know, school children in their homes? If we cannot reach them with e-learning in their homes, how can we be able to get them in their homes to feed them? You know, I, I think the, the, the whole idea, it, it's a good idea to feed children while at home, but I don't think they'll be able to achieve much you know, especially with the way our environment is designed and with our lack of statistics, our lack of, lack of 
uh, you know, data, you know, to be able to reach these children. But we didn't plan, I mean, uh, COVID-19 didn't alert us before it came. And so we didn't plan to know that, oh, this number of kids, this number of kids uh, pub who attend public schools are going to be here and there. So I don't think it's going to achieve, probably they just want to feed children in their homes, but I don't think it will achieve the desired um, um, effect that they wanted to to achieve. Probably they should just call it feeding children and not home uh, the homeschool feeding program because it's going to be difficult to determine that. But we don't have the requisite data to handle that. So what about the other headlines? Which of them uh, yeah. would you want very, to take well, on? Very, very quickly, I want to talk about this. The federal government frowning at the states uh, opening up church and mosques. Uh, mosques. Uh, I think the problem is that some of these state governors are playing politics with this issue. Some of them do not know the, the impact of COVID-19. They, they, they still are joking with the whole matter. I mean, the federal government says we want to stop, we want to reduce the number of community spread, you know. And then you, in your state, because you believe that you are not recording as many um, uh, uh, victims as, 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 as other states, we decided to just open up the, the state completely. I mean, I was, I, was, I was amazed the other day when the governor of Bruno State just ordered that, you know, the mosque can, can go, people can go to mosque and people can go to churches. We are not against religious practices and all that, but we believe strongly that these are, these are centers where you can have the spread of the virus very far very fast because it is very difficult to control people in a religious setting. I mean, I'll give you a small example. If you are in a church and somebody starts sneezing and somebody starts displaying symptoms of COVID-19, is it and in an enclosure? Don't you think that the possibility of having this thing spreading is more than if you are in an open space, for instance, like in a market, because that's the argument that if they open the market, why can't they open uh, religious centers? I think federal government has to frown at that. If it is possible to wield the big stick, they should please wield the big stick. Call up these governors and tell them that we need to continue to lock down places where people gather a lot so that we can stop the spread of the virus because COVID-19 is real. And then the poll that Lagos State government conducted is very interesting. I mean, that people will actually be calling for a total lockdown. And that's because they are beginning to see, you know, the effect of COVID-19. People are beginning to experience because, like someone said, if you don't experience something, if you don't see ambulance uh, uh, people moving, people being taken away from their homes to isolation centers, if you don't hear people, uh, influential people uh, 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 being admitted at the influential center, you would think that this whole thing is a joke. So I, 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 I welcome the poll result. And I just think that perhaps what they should do is to strengthen, you know, you know, the various um, processes that they have put in place to ease the lockdown, like transportation. They need to reduce that 60 percent that they give to these uh, commercial bus drivers. They need to reduce it to like 40 percent. They need to uh, reduce the number of days that people go out to work, like the Monday uh, Wednesday, Friday is not working again. Won't they can the, just do it for like Monday and Wednesday. Won't the further reduction of those that uh, transporters can carry uh, further strain their financial situation? Because these people live on a day-to-day -day basis. Oh well, is it not is it not better for you <coughs> to 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 have less in terms of what you will have to eat, uh, if, if what you have to feed with, than to Go down, the, uh, go down six feet below. I mean, why do you want to endanger yourself? Because I mean, I, I, I don't, I don't take anyone. In, I used to go to work and I'll pick one or two of my colleagues on the way to work, but I don't do it anymore. At least for now. I mean, it doesn't make me a bad person. I'm just being careful. We need to be careful. They, 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 COVID-19 is real. I mean, it doesn't. It's not like you have a mark of COVID-19 on you to know who enters the bus or who. I think they should. They are not, the reason why I'm advocating for the reduction is that they are not even following the protocols that have been given to them. Right. Like, they need to ensure that their passengers have their mask on. They need to also ensure that they have their sanitizer, their conductors have sanitizers that they must give them 
to sanitize their hands. We don't all have right. all those ones. I, I, I boarded the bus two days ago, just like a trial, and none of this happened. Okay, let, let's take a look at this day newspaper and see what is making the headlines there. Decline in non-COVID-19 ailment consultation in hospitals worries federal government. A couple of writers uh, fears pandemic might hinder fight against other diseases as outpatient crash from 4 million to 2 million, says face mask compulsory. At the top of the paper, we have rate increase raises VAT revenue to 339 billion naira in the first quarter. Ahmed meets National Assembly leadership over 2020 budget cut. Uh, that issue seems not to be going away anytime soon. Um, FD explains why marketers cannot exclusively determine petrol prices. You find details on page five of the paper. There are other stories on the paper as well. Uh, we have uh, Gov's challenge FG over utilization of recovered loots. Edge National Assembly to stop infectious disease bill. And then you have a picture of the meeting there with President Muhammad Buharis, uh, the National Security Council. Uh, virtually meets in Abuja. Uh, UN agency alerts Nigerians to impending terrorist attacks. I hope we're taking that one seriously. Um, Mr. Alsini, your, your thoughts quickly um, as we wrap up this morning. Well, it's a good thing that there's so much uh, talk around the infectious disease bill and it's, good, it's a good thing too that um, the As National Assembly has decided to put it on hold until perhaps after uh, the, I mean, when we finally ease down the country and then people are able to come for public hearings and look at the bill critically. So it's a good thing that, you know, people are talking around it so that they really know that you don't shave a man's head, you know, behind him and all that. So um, the other one that we need to quickly talk about, because some of these issues have appeared in, some, in the other newspapers that we have reviewed, is the issue of budget cut. There is definitely a need to reduce the budget, especially in, in uh, plugging some of these resources into critical areas like, like, like health and like, and like infrastructure development. I mean, look at what, what COVID-19 has exposed us to. It has just clearly showed us that we need to do so much more in infrastructure development and we need to do so much more in trying to fix our healthcare system. So we need, we need to cut the budget. If we need to, if we, if we need to pick uh, funds from areas that do not need immediate attention, the National Assembly has to agree with the executive for us to do that. So it is very important that we have budget costs across board, from the executive to the judiciary, as well as the um, um, legislators. We need, to, we need to tweak the budget a bit to accommodate our present reality. And the present reality is, is that we must care for our health sector, and then we must also fix basic infrastructure, like light, like electricity, I beg your pardon, and then roads, so on and so forth. All right, Chaibu Usedi, thank you very much for joining us uh, to review the headlines in the papers this morning. We appreciate you. The pleasure is mine. And that's how we wrap things up right now for the papers. More programs here on Plus TV Africa. Don't go away. My name is Felicity Ezeweke.